Sorry I'm a little late here. You know, mom life. <laughs> mom life. Hi, welcome, welcome. How is everyone tonight? Hey, Gabby. How are you tonight? Welcome, everyone. Sorry I'm a little late. You know, story of my life, you know, just mom life. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is as I'm waiting for everyone to kind of show up, because we do have a topic tonight I'm really excited about, because kind of how I got my start. I don't know, like, really, like... I'm good. I'm good. Um, it's it's uh how do you say like it's 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 kind of how I got my start. Like how I kind of really went through my whole spiritual awakening was really doing a lot of paranormal stuff. I really dealt with a lot more paranormal stuff before I transitioned to anything else. So it's definitely you know almost like home to a degree. <laughs> Not like in a comfortable way, but you know in a just what I've always kind of just fallen back on. Um, but I thought while we were waiting for me, more people to show up, people wait like five, ten minutes, we could do, um, I got my tarot cards. Because why not? We all know I love my tarot cards. I mean, I started doing paranormal stuff before I even started learning how to do um, tarot. Yeah, so. At least I was having, a, I mean, I, I can't remember, like, um, let me turn these off. I'm sure, like, what, think about your very first paranormal experience. What was that like? It was, it was terrifying. You had no idea what was going on. Um, but the reason why I really want to talk about shadow people right now, right now is because I feel like there's been such an uptick lately with shadow people. But before we do that, I thought it'd be really fun if we could just get some messages from Spirit. We'll do pick a card. We'll do three piles. Um, what's coming? We'll just do, you know, what's coming to you in the near future. We're going to do uh, three piles. So start to think about what pile you want. Hey girl, by the way, I see you pine tree. Um, we're gonna do a nice little pick a card. We'll wait and hang out and vibe a little bit. And then after we do the pick a card, I'm gonna, I wanna kinda tell you my, my a little, uh, some stories, right? We'll talk some stories. We'll do some story times, nothing too long. And then we're gonna talk about, you know, how you can deal with these things. How can you deal with a, a shadow person? How do you get a shadow person to leave you alone? You know, first getting it out. <laughs> and then how do you keep them away? Um, and then we're going to talk about what is even a shadow person. You know, it's so hard to really define what a shadow person is. What are they? What is a shadow person? Um, and then I'll kind of jump into Q and A's. Y'all can tell me your experiences with shadow people. But first, like I said, we're going to do a quick little pick a pile, um, because we're going to wait until a little bit more people show up and we'll, we'll get into the, to the nitty gritty. But first and foremost, we're going to do three piles. What you can expect to come towards you in the near future. So, let's go. I'm going to use my tarot and my queen of the moon. How fitting. Doing some nighttime stuff with this deck. Okay. All right, so we've got three piles. Pick a pile, guys. You know, put it in the chat if you want to. If not, you know, remember, this is what's coming to you in the near future. We're going to have three piles, and we're going to start with pile one right now. And then we'll jump into... I've got a, some pretty interesting stories about shadow people, to be honest with you. Um, when you're as sensitive as I am, <laughs> they, they, they really be around. That's what's up, girl. All right, so coming forward, I have the chariot for group one, and I have the queen of pentacles in reverse, but with the self-reflection. I think you're feeling incredibly drained. It's like, you know what you want to do. I think in the near future, you're really going to be calling back your energy. I feel like it's like, you know, I, I'm really going to be sitting with me because I know exactly kind of where I want to go with things. I'm in this planning p place, I think, for a lot of you going forward. And I really believe that you're starting to really integrate your shadow, but you're also starting to, a lot of times when we're, when we're integrating your shadow, we can struggle with going too dark. I think what's there's going to be a lot of, uh, how do you say, calibrating going on. And it's going to take a, a lot. I'm not going to lie to you. I think what's going forward is you're really going to be going through this place of, okay, I know what I want going forward. 
but what do I need to do right now to get there? So for my group one guys, just understand self-care is huge. Self-love is so important when you're going through any transition, any transformation, transformation, you know, really taking the time to put yourself first and make yourself a priority. That is what my lovelies group one, you have to do. Hey girl, we're doing a quick pick a pile before we jump into story time and all that other fun stuff. So that was group one. And then group two, we have the two of wands in reverse with the tower in reverse. This is not as scary as you think, guys. Um, and then we also have our oracle card, which is beauty. Um, this is some interesting piles today. I was not, ex the vibe is a little, uh, not bad, just, uh. <laughs> it's all good though. I think it's like definitely a feeling of, of being stuck, you know, not looking forward, really avoiding something big. Maybe it's intimidating. You're definitely avoiding something big. Um, and right now I need you just to really kind of dig yourself and be strong and really focus on the things that make you happy, the things that make you beautiful, creating that beauty, even though you feel stuck. Thank you, girl. I want everybody to understand something. Sometimes things get tough and we hit a wall. What are you supposed to do with that wall? Lean up on the wall. And I feel like this is really going to be a place for contemplation and you having to really focus on building that sacred space right now, because I think for a lot of my group two babies is you're, you're really kind of like pushing through some deep, dark stuff. Unfortunately, this is not what I was expecting to read. You need to pull cards. Yeah. I think a lot of us, um, have been, but yeah, do what you gotta do. Sometimes you just need that break. You, you, there is such a thing as being over spiritual. I think that you it's very tricky on witch talk and spiritual talk because there's such an emphasis on everything being a message and everything doing this and everything have a meaning. A lot of times we forget just to be human. A lot of times we need to take a break. You know, we get so stuck into this spiritual healing and witchcraft and all this stuff that sometimes we just forget to be real and, and just kind of like laugh and have fun and not put so much weight in constantly having to practice. You know, life keeps ticking whether you want it to or not. And you don't want to miss out on some pretty solid things and sitting pretty beautiful things on, on top of that. And I think for my group too, guys, I think that's kind of where I'm at with you. I think you guys really need to kind of like, almost like put that spirituality on the back burner, you know, and really kind of refocus on digging out of those closets, you know, really refocusing your energy on not so much your spirituality because spirituality is really important, but more so, you know, what have you been putting, putting off? Because it's almost like you've been in spiritual overdrive. And that's a thing. And you can go into spiritual burnout when you do that. Um, and so I really want for my spiritual guy, my pile two babies, I want you to really start focusing going forward and to get back to those things you've been neglecting. That's where you've got to go in the near future. So let's jump into pile three. Okay. And then we have the three of wands. Thank you. And the nine of swords with the assessing. You know, it's funny because, and not to go off track too much, I think a lot of people are a little nervous about what's going on with this, you know, Delta variant and just, you know, the energy of what's going on. There's a lot of really crazy energy right now. And I think it's imperative going into what we're going to talk about tonight with shadow people is understanding that, you know what, most of you are not newbies anymore. Not my babies who are here right now. You've got a little bit of experience now. Things are not going to be as hard this time around, even with dealing with the pandemic. We know how to protect ourselves better this time, okay? So my pile three babies, we have, like I said, the three of wands. This is about you kind of like wanting to move forward, wanting to take big steps, looking towards the future, having a lot of energy, a lot of creative ideas, kind of dipping your toes in the water, but then slowing yourself down. It's like, you know, you're really hesitant to like take things forward. I think there's been a lot of failures in the past that, you know, intimidate you, but this goes back to what I was just saying, you know, you're, this is different this time around. You have a lot more experience under your belt. You've overcome a lot of things. This is just another challenge. And I think going forward is it's not so much that, you know, you need to stop. You just need to remember those lessons you've already learned so that you can implement them and put them into practice, put them into work. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Remember, you know, don't lose sleep over this. This isn't something you've never done before. These are things you've conquered in the, we've been here, we've done that. You know, I'm gonna use the pandemic as an, as an example again. It's like, you know what? We know how to, to, to stay home. <laughs> we've done this before. We've got a little taste of summer, you know, okay, great. We got a reprieve. But if we go on lockdowns, that doesn't mean that we're not gonna be okay. We're way better equipped this time. We're way better equipped. 
you know, especially with our, our spirituality, our knowledge, you know, going through the pandemic before was a real spiritual, almost warfare for so many people that actually ended up waking so many people up. You know what I mean? So breathe. <laughs> You're going to be okay. You are, you have so many more tools. You have so many more tools. Now you just get to put them into, into, yeah, into, into action now. And I promise you, it's going to make a difference because when you were going through it before, hey guys, thank you so much. When you were going through it before, it was like, you know, oh shit, what the fuck are we doing? You know, this is terrifying. No, guys, it's, it's totally different this time around because you've leveled up on, in so many ways. Thank you, Ben. I appreciate you. You've leveled up in so many ways. And this is also about you guys, and this is collectively, for a lot of you that are here, I feel like I need to say this, because I'm very blessed to have such a, a, a powerful, you know, tribe. <laughs> Thank you guys. Such a powerful tribe. And I'm, I'm very grateful and I'm very blessed. Uh, and it takes, it's a lot of responsibility sometimes, and it can be a little intimidating, but I love you guys, and you guys are so patient with me, and much love. Um, Y'all are going to be pushed to step up. You realize that, right? You do realize what's coming, right? You do realize why I'm having these conversations with you, right? You do get it. Because what I was doing a year ago, <laughs> which was holding everybody's hands and ho holding those little baby hands and helping them wake up and, you know, kind of be like, hey, this is how you do this and this is what you do. That's, it's your turn. It's your turn now. You, you do get that. You do feel the energy, right? You guys are going to be called on. You guys are going to be called on to be on the front line this time around. We've had this past full moon, we had some serious, serious awakenings. I know, and that's a lot of the energy shift right now. So many people are like, what the fuck is going on? Remember how crazy you felt when you first started to detach from the matrix, the whatever you want to call it. And you started to see... Oh my God, there's so much more out there. And so the energy is shifting. And this is like the perfect segue into what I was going to talk about. Beautiful. Thank you, spirit. <laughs> you know, when you have so much craziness, it attracts a lot of other shit, right? Like shadow people. But like I said, guys, y'all aren't going to be pushed to be there because... I got to be there for you guys. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, Psychic City Witch, she'll tell you. Same thing. Like, you know, we, we the, the last time this went around and we had to go through some rapid healing and we had to step up and we had to do readings and we had to do all these things. The, it was our turn. It was our turn. But guess what? It's your turn. <laughs> it's your turn. But us, Mama's going to be here. Psychic City Witch, same thing. We're still here. Y'all can still lead on us. We got you. Thank you. Thank you. But y'all got to get ready for this shit. Y'all got to get your rest right now. And that's kind of the vibe I'm getting. And I don't know if you, I feel like the psychic tingles are like, yes, baby, you got the message. Y'all got to, you know, clean out your closets, get your shit ready. Because if we do go on lockdown because of this pandemic, you know what's coming next. What happened the last time we went on a lockdown? Everyone's home. Everyone has time to connect. Everyone has time to disconnect. You got to be ready you you gotta be ready and so we'll see i don't like to make predictions on stuff like that i'm gonna tell you why because two reasons actually one it's not healthy it's not healthy for us to get into this fear right now it's just not we just have to do, what are they, what's, the, what's the old cliche saying? You know, hope for the best, but plan for the worst, always. There are certain things that we shouldn't know. There are certain things for mass hysteria reasons or whatever. Not to say that I see anything because I have deliberately blocked myself and deliberately tapped out of that. Because I know how I work and it's not healthy for me to be like, oh no, da -da -da -da. it's just not good for me. I can't, and that's just spiritual boundaries. And that's just me being like, you know, I know myself and I got to just stay grounded and stay here. I know myself. So with that being said it really comes down to how seriously is our government going to take this because people who are getting vaccines whether you believe it or not doesn't change the fact that lockdowns or you know societal changes are going to come whether you believe it or not 
I'm not really worried about World War III right this second, to be honest with you. That I've tapped into. We're fine. <laughs> um, I will say this, though. I have family in the medical field. I do. People are dying from who have had the vaccine. People are having the vaccines or are being told they have to get, you know, boosters. And so whether you like it or not, shit's, shit, 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 shit's up in the air. Let's leave it there, okay? Um, okay, so this is where I'm at. Sleep paralysis. I want to start right there. Sleep paralysis is a hell of a bitch, and I'm going to tell you why. Because sometimes it's just a sleep condition. And sometimes it's something way more than that. You know what I mean? It is always so important. Hey, gorgeous. It is always so important before you go down any metaphysical or ghosty paranormal path to do everything in your power to debunk things. Be evidential. Always get your health checked. You know, you don't want to have some mental health issues exasperating a situation. You know what I mean? You know, if you have sleep apnea, that can turn on, you know, it could be seen as sleep paralysis. Now, I'm going to tell you my experiences with sleep paralysis. The sleep paralysis that I have, I don't get the ones where I feel like something's on my chest. That is not what I experience. So I can't speak on that. I get the ones where I wake up and I feel like something is throwing me out of my bed. I get the ex I get the sleep paralysis where I can't wake up on my own and I literally feel like something is dragging me out of my bed and I have actually had experiences early on in my psychic career and a few times when I've let my ward go down where something has physically pulled me out of bed and it was a shadow person. Um, it's scary. It's really scary, isn't it? You know, to be that vulnerable you know when you sleep it's a vulnerable time you know it's it's why it's so important for you to take the time to cleanse and protect your your bedroom area especially your bed everything and we're going to get into different ways and there's so many beautifully blessed people in my live right now that have so much wealth of information as well that they can add to this this topic um shadow people guys like what is a shadow person Hey, girl, um, what is a shadow person? You know, that's really up for debate. No one can absolutely 100% say what a shadow person is. So I'm going to speak on my theory. And my theory is this. I think shadow people are so many different things. Because you ever, I mean, for example, Psychic City Witch, she loves to astral project. I'm still a little traumatized from my early years of astral projecting. So I do it. I try not to do it. I'm, there's a lot of times if I forget to tether myself when I go to sleep, I'm doing it in my dreams. But it, it's not always been the best experience for me, <laughs> to be honest with you. All of a sudden, I'm ending up somewhere, and I don't. I have a really hard time dealing with with. Well, I think it's a. Well, I don't really think it's demons. I'm gonna tell you why I don't think it's demons when I get to that. I think it's many things. I think it's people out joyriding, astral projecting. Absolutely. I definitely think some shadow people, it's just a nosy motherfucker who's out astral projecting, who, you know, pokes their head in their window and is like, yo, what's up? Yo, what's up? <laughs> um, I do. I really do. I do believe that some of, a lot of, not a lot, but many of the shadow people that people encounter are people astral projecting. Um, I believe that they're time travelers too. You know, I don't know how many times I've, I've heard so many stories of people like, you know, being children, right? And seeing a shadow person and then 10 years later having that experience where in the middle of the night they wake up like they're having a sleep paralysis moment or a, a crazy projection dream when it's like oh my god then they go back and they remember and it's like at their old house like 10 years before and it's like that little kid playing in the living room and they remember like looking up and seeing a familiar shadow and it seems familiar it's not scary i do think it's that too see that's what i mean by shadow people can be so many different things People are all so caught up on the fact that shadow people is one scary thing. It's so many things. Um, spirits, normal happy spirits, not so great spirits. You know, they can be past loved ones. They can be ancestors. They can be just a friendly ghost that happens to be walking to a portal. Like, hey, you got a portal in your in your closet, so so don't mind me. So I'm gonna just. I'm going to go check out your portal over here and, and I'm just because I want to go get from point A to Z very, very quickly. And I know you have an out portal in your closet, so don't mind me. I'm going to just walk through your living room and into your bedroom and then into and just be on my merry way. It can literally just be like that. You see what I'm saying? And then you have your other stuff. You're not so nice stuff. You have your things that were never human. 
you have maybe some, you know, people say they might be aliens. Thank you, thank you, love you guys. It could be, that's the thing, you know, they're shadow people because we don't really fucking know what they are, right? So they could be anything. They could literally be anything. They really could. And that's intimidating. See, people aren't so much afraid of the dark. People aren't so much afraid of the night. What they are afraid of is what's lurking in the night that they don't understand and they don't know. That's a very powerless place to be, right? To be sitting there somewhere and be like, in your bed, no less, probably butt-ass naked or in a nightgown or whatever you sleep in, boxers, whatever. And, you know, feeling like some jolt or some sort of interference that wakes you up out of bed, right? And then looking and seeing a big, tall, scary shadow person. You're like, what the fuck? You're already vulnerable. First and foremost, you're already vulnerable. So you're already feeling insecure. And then on top of it, <laughs> you don't know what the fuck it is. And you don't know if you should be afraid of it. And you don't know what to do about it. So what's next? I mean, I've had shadow experiences where I'm just driving down the road. And I see a shadow person walking across the road. Like, just on its own merry way, going out for a stroll. And, you know, it's fine. It's no big deal. I've seen shadow people literally where I'm just cooking dinner and I look to my left and there's a shadow in the corner because, you know, maybe I need to go redo my borders or maybe it's just something that's, you know, just passing through, like I said before. Um, generally speaking, I don't believe they're angels. I don't believe they're deities. I don't believe they're any of that stuff. That's just my theory. But, you know, everyone has different experiences. I've never experienced anything like that. I do not believe they're demons. I do not believe they're demons. I just don't. That's just my perspective. I think most people who think they are possessed by, oh, they could also be like a parasite or like a, a parasite from the astral plane that's kind of messing with you while you sleep. It could be a lot of other things, but I just wanted to touch on that stuff. Um, I don't believe it's a demon. And the reason why, because of my experiences, I don't think it's a demon, is because demons have so much more energy that they can manifest much more of a solid figure does that compute does that make sense it, it's really hard for me to believe it's really hard for me to believe that a demon would just show up like that i just it's, it's i can't and then intuitively speaking i just don't feel it i think that most people think who are dealing with a demonic or this or whatever or even a jinn it's usually a shadow person in my opinion, because shadow people that are not so nice or want to mess with you, what exactly do they even do to you? Disturb your sleep, make you jump, close some doors, turn the radio on. What do they even really do? What is it that is so um, physically detrimental to you that they're doing in that moment? And a lot of times you, that's how you can kind of decide what is it? Is it bad? Is it, you know, is it just a nuisance? Think about it like that, you know, break it down, really break it down. If you're going to have some shadow person come in and it's just being nosy, you really think a demon's going to come in and just be nosy? That doesn't make any sense. That doesn't, yes, I'm about it. it just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense to me. And I'm just, I tend to be very logical and just like, you know, very simplistic. I mean, that's why I'm the basic witch. Because if it doesn't make any, lo if it's not logical to me, I tend to be kind of a skeptic, which I think is very healthy. I just don't run with it because I don't think it's healthy to run with it. You know, and that's why people ask me all the time how, I, well, well, that's a, I was talking about past lives. But that's a whole other thing. That's how I look at demons have better things to do. Why would a demon, in my opinion, be interested in Tommy Sue down the road? for no reason, from 12 year old little kid or 14 year old little kid. Why? Think about how, you know, the exorcist and how rare it is to hear about actual demonic possessions. I mean, that's a rarity. That's a real rarity. That doesn't happen all the time. That's why like the big Catholic churches and the priests and all this other stuff, I mean, it happens. No one's saying it's not happening, but it's a rarity. It does not happen all the time. Demons aren't just walking in ar around. They're just not. They're just not, you know, it's certainly not the demons that you're thinking as far as with, you know, poltergeist and all that other stuff, but there's other type of demons as well. They're just not. E exactly. Exactly. They, they don't care about us. They've got bigger fish to fry. You know, w what is a demon going to be interested in? They're going to be interested in something that has a lot of power, you know, somebody in a powerful position. You know, maybe a politician. I mean, think about the movie Omen. You think that just came out of thin air? Or you think somebody might have had an actual experience that way? Because a lot of, uh, you know, movies and stuff like that reflect real life. They do. They just do.
Exactly. Exactly. Why would they be? Exactly. If they can take the form of actual people, it is more likely to get its job done. hundred percent. Couldn't agree more. Absolutely. Why? They're not going to just half-ass it. That's not how they are. They're just not, you know, and you're going to feel that energy. Like think about the energetic power. If you, especially if you work with something like e angels or deities or gods, goddess, whatever, you know, you refer to them, like think about that, that power, that energy that you're feeling. Shadow people don't emit that type of energy. It's, it's not a demon. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just, it doesn't make sense. Um, okay, so, yes, let's talk about parasitic. They can be parasites. What is a parasite? A parasite is an earthbound spirit. What's an earthbound spirit? An earthbound spirit is the, a type of spirit that has decided, you know what, I don't want to cross over. Those are the shadow people you especially need to worry about, and I'm going to explain to you why. It's, they could be angry that they died. They could um, be afraid to pass over because they don't know what's on the other side and maybe they committed a lot of stuff in their human life that they're not so proud of um so they can be not nice there is such a thing as a not nice spirit especially earthbound spirits because even the nice earthbound spirits are a parasite why because in order for them to survive in the human 3d they need an energy source they do and it's going to be you if they're in your home and it's very, very draining and it's very exhausting. And I've dealt with them. And it's why I shy away from mediumship sometimes because it's like, you never know when somebody's loved one's going to show up. And it's literally, I've had one experience that was especially draining where um, somebody had passed over in a car accident and it was their son and it was an earthbound spirit and it just did not want to pass on. And it was very draining and I could not get rid of it. And it literally lingered with me for a couple of weeks until I finally was like, you know, took everything in my power to get rid of it. And I, and then it almost like it was like hovering outside my house too. It was crazy. It was crazy. It just didn't want to leave because, you know, what's a better source than a psychic medium? That's some juicy, juicy, love, lovely, gushy stuff. You know, of course it was like, hell yeah, I don't want to go anywhere. This is great shit. Um, and, and, you know, I'd never really dealt with an earthbound spirit at that time in my career where it was so attached to my energy that it wouldn't leave. Most of the times I dealt with like earthbound energies that are spirits that were, you know, I could cajole them or convince them it was time to pass over. So, and that's why I, you know, the, the psychics and the mediums that I, I teach and guide, I do uh, touch on all the time how important it is to be safe during, thank you, you know, during readings because you can absolutely get an attachment during a reading. You can. I don't care what anybody says. You know, people are all love and light and that's great. But you know what? Accidents happen. People make mistakes. People forget to button up. It happens. You know, it happens to the best of us. And I'm, it does. Um, okay. So let's talk about removal. How do you remove shadow people? Well, claim your space. It's that simple. Um, claim your space. You can claim your space in so many ways. You can use salt. Um, you can use, you know, sacred smoke. That's a form of claiming your space. That is you taking something physical in the 3D world and being like, you know what, I'm cleansing this out and speaking it out in existence. You're getting whatever rituals. But if you're a newbie, I honestly, honestly want you to start first with speaking it into existence. Leave. Get out. You are not welcome here. I recall any of my, all of my energy. You have no access. You are not welcome. You need to speak it out and you need to be firm. You need to com command your space. This is your space. Now, if you're dealing with children, one of my favorite tips and tricks to keep their room safe is for their for your children to claim their space. And my children do this and have done this. Um, have them do some sort of painting or something that signifies them, whether it's their name or an animal or something that really are guardian or something. I want them to really put their energy into it. And then I want you to put it on their the door of their um, their bedrooms. That's like, you know, the front door. And I tell people all the time, when you move into your home, put something on your front door that claims this space is yours and remove anything that might invite them in, like welcome mats or anything like that. That's a, that's a very simple way of kind of commanding your space. Um, another way I love to use is sound therapy. You can go on YouTube. You can look up binaural beads for cleansing, for protection, removals, very powerful stuff. Um, it's also remember you can't show it fear because fear is always access. If you show fear, you're giving access. Okay. So sometimes as you know, you've got to just sort of put your big girl panties on, you know, buckle up and just go get your pot and pans if you have to and bang it out. Let it be known that it's not welcome. 
okay? You've really got to do everything in your power to command your space. Command it. I'm telling you, I don't care how many spells you do in the world. If you are not confident in the fact that this is your space and this is your home, yes, bells are great. I actually have some around. I keep, I love bells. Bells. I keep, actually, every single wall, I think every room has a bell because they're just so great. Um, bells are great. I'm glad. Thank you for bringing that up. I appreciate you. Um, then it's important to ward. So the difference between removal and warning for any of my noobs is a ward is just think about it. It's like putting a big old, big old private privacy fence around your space, you know, the removal. And then you got to put up your walls. It's just like putting a moat or, you know, a psychic thing around your home to protect you. Singing bowls are, I think my singing bowl is downstairs. I'm slowly moving my office back upstairs and getting back into my space, which has been a really nice relief. Um, sacred smoke is great. Um, diffusers are great if you can't do smoke. Wax warmers do it too, guys. Especially if you put that energy and that intention into it and you have the right corresponding um, aromatherapy. But like I said, go on YouTube. I mean, you can, and you can do many things at once. I mean, I tend to be a little overkill because I have kids here and the last thing I want is my children to wake up and be afraid. Um, there has definitely been a massive uptake in shadow people, massive. And that has to do with the state of everything going on. And so many people actually even just being more aware of them now too. Um, and going through healing. You know, going through healing makes you vulnerable. Why? Because you're, you're bringing up traumas, you're bringing things to the surface that make you uncomfortable, you're dealing with anxieties, you're confronting things, and that makes you vulnerable, and that makes you raw. And that's why when I do talk to my babies or my loved ones, it is so important for me to express them, hey, you're going through a healing journey? Cleansing and protection is your number one priorities. Before you do any prosperity, love, anything like that, You've got to start there because, you know, you can be, if you're going to be a beacon of light amiss all of this stuff, you're going to attract stuff, especially shadow people. You just are. That's great. And isn't that so wonderful? Because if you think about it, wouldn't have that have been so great if like we had had that opportunity to be seven years old and already have the command or the knowledge or the strength and to do to protect ourselves. Can you imagine how much that would have saved us all as adults now? And and it is, it is why I'm so passionate about children and why, you know, I go out of my way to speak on it. Oh, well, probably because you were already sensitive. Um, spell bags are great. Spell jars are great. Um, I'm huge on salt. I think salt is any witches or any empaths or any psychic's best friend because anybody can get it. You know, if you're on a vacation and you happen to encounter a shadow person in your hotel room, you can probably go get some salt packets from the lobby. It's that accessible and it works that well. Same thing with water. If you're in a hotel room and you don't go get you a cup of water and bless your water and sprinkle it all over your room and cleanse the fuck out of it. It's that powerful. It's really that great. And we are that powerful inside of us. And we have such a fire inside of us, you know, that being and knowing and just knowing what you can use on hands is even when you're not at home is so important because you can take that tips and tricks and then translate that into teaching your practice. Like, let's say you have a brand new client, right? And your client is like, Oh God, you know, I keep saying things and they don't have anything and they're scared and you don't know where to point them. That's great. You can tell your clients and you can tell your babies, Hey guys, you know, do you have salt or go check your cupboard? Do you have any cinnamon sticks? Cause you can put your cinnamon sticks, you know, really start to think about intro to witchcraft. Think about how naive you were. And, and that's, that's really important for you to convey to your clients. It's really important for you to remind them and even yourselves like, Hey guys, this is really accessible and anybody can do this because that's empowering. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. And oh, and that is a good point because a lot of times shadow people can literally just be manifestations of our heart our, our, uh, from us and they can be scary. And then here we where we were the source the whole time, but that's a whole nother, uh, whole nother thing. That's great. 
And like I said, and then if you start to layer all of those things together, you know, if you're cleansing with water and then you cleanse with salt, you're protecting with salt, you know, just the layers and layers and adding everything on top, you know, you might think it's not a lot because you just sprinkled some water around. But if you sprinkle some water around and then you put salt in the four corners of your room and then you went on YouTube real quick and you played some cleansing protection, that's a fucking pretty powerful spell right there. Literally, because you have three layers now. That's wild. And then add another layer and speaking it into intention, speaking it into existence. Holy shit. Now, they really fucked up if you have an onion <laughs> or a lemon, then they really fucked up. I love salt bowls. The problem with salt bowls is people forget that that salt is absorbing negative energy and that you have if you are very spiritual you, we or you're inclined or mediumship in any way it is so you can salt in four corners absolutely is very powerful stuff um onions onions in your home throughout your home like hidden it's really powerful stuff by the way that's awesome i actually have four uh railroad spikes from massachusetts around my property that i have blessed and driven into the land um chicken bones you can take chicken bones kind of like your railroad tides same thing apple onions great for uh yeah yeah absolutely for, especially if you want for a return to center or even just taking a slice okay for example i take um i take a onion and i, I keep them on top of my stove so that it absorbs any negative energy so it never goes into my cooking. So, yeah. Um, it, it's wild because if you think of salt and how powerful salt is, you know, if you have some internal things going on, you need a nice deep cleanse, go put some salt on, on an egg. And, you know, that in itself is so powerful. You know, taking that egg, that, that beautiful, banishing, abundant egg and removing and then protecting and cleansing with the salt and eating it throughout mindfully through your body, internally through your organs and everything, that is some serious cleanse. Don't forget that when we eat, that when we eat, how powerful that is. It's why, you know, little things like you wanna stay spiritually strong, that spiritual hygiene has to be on point. At the same time, you wanna keep those shadow people away all the time. Spiritual strength is, and hygiene is, is, is so important. It's so important. It's so important. I can't stress that to you enough. Especially if you're doing tarot readings or if you're living in a home that's really, really old. Your spiritual hygiene has to be like literally priority number one. Like literally for mental health reasons. Because how susceptible are we as empaths and, senses and clairsentients to absorbing and taking on some crazy ass energy? Crazy ass energy that can literally throw us completely off. Now imagine if you have a shadow person come in and doesn't want to leave and it's just creating chaos. And here you are as a clairsentient taking all of that in. It's why spiritual hygiene has to be so important. You know, bathing every day. Every day we have to bathe. Every day. <laughs> um, another really important thing is if you have a fireplace to protect your fireplace. Uh, you can draw sigils on the mantle because that's a, that's a, that's another entrance guys. That's an in, in and out. Okay. So you've got to protect that as well. I just felt like I needed to say that to somebody. Um, windows are important. No better. You guys no, no, I can't stress this enough. No mirrors in the bedroom unless you have to, and definitely not facing your beds. Absolutely not. That's crazy. Or if they're there, cover them up or seal them the fuck shut. Do you see? Do you, that's a portal, guys. TV, same thing. If you have a TV in your bedroom and you have not put a sigil on it, because think about a scrying, like a, an obsidian crystal ball. Hello? That's a, that's a doorway, guys. And it has so many people have televisions in their room. So you might think, hey guys, I've, I've buttoned up my whole house. I've sigiled everything, but your televisions 
and you're wondering, you're like, Kate, why am I still having so much activity? Uh, hello? Hello? You can do a sigil like this. You can do... I'm really not good at drawing. You can do a pentacle for sure. Or this is a rune. You've probably seen it before. I mean, you can do a rune, you can do a cross. Crosses are, you know, crucifies. Crosses are very protective. Um, or just a simple rune like this. It's called your algae. And you can do a pentacle. Um, and you take, you can use just water that you've blessed. Uh, water with salt and the blessing is very, very powerful. And just sort of draw it. You can add, you can do it with essential oils, maybe a lavender or rosemary or frankincense. Um, dude, you know what I do? I charm my, I charm, I charm everything. I write sigils on like, and runes on everything. Like literally everything. Uh, I mean, even like, like my perfumes and my, um, my oils and my shampoo, my conditioner, my soap that I wash the dishes, like literally. I put runes and sigils on everything. But I mean, I work with spirits. I work with the dead. <laughs> not to, I'm not taking any chances. Like, why would I do that? That's just crazy. That's crazy, Doc. Why would I take any chances? Especially when I've had so many param param paranormal encounters. Why would I take the chance when I can easily just take, you know, my shampoo bottle, write an algae on it, and all of a sudden I've got a protective veil for my hair? Moisturizer, same thing. Enchant the fuck out of your moisturizer and put it, slather that bitch all over your body. Right, take a cleansing shower and moisturize the fuck out of yourself after you just enchanted it. <laughs> That's powerful. That is powerful. Powerful. Even more powerful if you go and get a lotion that, you know, has rosemary or lavender or some sort of essential oil in it. Or you can even add it yourself literally just be careful it's not an irritant you know do your research there's plenty of wonderful essential oil uh books out there websites where you can tell which ones are going to be safe on your skin and which ones aren't but this is this is about working smarter not harder guys thank you okay i'm gonna open it up to questions now oh for real ha that's awesome Hey, if it works. Oh, that's a really good advice. Uh, I like to use um, rose stems with the thorns on them for like that type of warding and stuff. I'm going to actually upload this on my YouTube. It's not because it's not random. It's just an actual conversation about shadow people and it has like a topic and shit. So, <laughs> yes, absolutely. You can use any salt. Absolutely, 100%. You know, actually have something that, I, you know, I want to put on YouTube because it might actually say something worthwhile. <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to put this on my YouTube. My YouTube, I'm pretty sure it's still linked. I'll have to go double check. And you guys can go check that out. Oh, well, we're not talking about shadow work. So I'm going to, I'm not going to, we'll talk about shadow work another time. We're talking about um, shadow people tonight, which is completely different, but we can do a shadow work uh, thing another night. But any other questions concerning shadow people? I wouldn't stick it there. I do, I don't upload enough, but, and I really only just upload my lives from here, but I need to, I do better like when I know I'm talking to something. I struggle with actual like, just sitting down and like staring at a camera for more, like, like for anything, unless it's only like 20 second, 30 second, maybe a minute TikTok. Uh, it's linked. <laughs> just go to my bio, man. I will do a night of Hakate, but a hundred percent. I'll probably, maybe I'll do that next week. Cause I'm going to, I'm going to really start to focus these, um, live something for scariest. I've had a few, okay, the scariest happened when I was at my mom's house back in Philly. Um, and it was probably my first encounter where I really felt something like reach out and touch me. I had just had my son. 
I was a single mom and I just went back to my mom's house just to save money and stuff. And, you know, so my mom lives in Philly in like a house that's like two or th 200 plus years old. Like it's old. And she lives right in the heart of Philadelphia in one of those beautiful old townhomes. You know, it's, it's beautiful. Um, and I've always been really creeped out about the basement because the basement has like one of those dirt floors. Okay. And it's, it's, it's really old, like really old. It has like weird crawl spaces. It's, it's just really creepy. It has like a boarded up, it's really, it's like, and then on top of it, my mom's a pack rat. So there's so much stuff in there and there's so many places for anything just to hide, whether ever it's a rat. And then also the worst part was that it would always flood even if it just rained like a couple inches like it was so it was dark it was damp it was gross um so i go down there and i could literally feel something staring at me now it's not a crazy story but it was scary and i'm gonna explain to you why because it was the first time i ever like i always kind of felt but i felt it that time like something watching me okay and i'll explain to you why it's really crazy and why that my mom's house terrifies me to this day my stupid ass <laughs> tells it to leave me the, like I cussed it out because I was scared and I didn't know what I was doing. This was, I was like, how old was I? I was like 26, 27. Like I was new to all everything. And it was like, really, whatever. I, something intuitively told me to haul ass up these narrow wooden stairs as fast as I could I had to get the fuck out of there mind you I grew up in this house I lived in this house from the time I was 10 days old up until you know I moved out when I was 19 or 18 and then like I'd always been around like I knew this house like it was always creepy because it was old but this was this was different this was crazy and but I couldn't it was like it was crazy because I kept like running up the stairs and tripping it was like out of a nightmare and to this day, I have never gone back down there. And I lived there for a while, like six months after the fact. The reason why it's so scary is this. Every single man, and I swear on my life this is true. Every single man who has ever lived in that home died crazy or gone crazy. My father killed himself literally drowned himself in the ocean took pills and drove his scooter like he had like one of those little vespa things off a pier just was done on his birthday okay my mom then remarried and he moved in he lived there for a year and out of nowhere he got really bad like really really sick out of nowhere like this guy walked two three miles every day like was super healthy worked he was a professor at drexel university you know he worked for the thank you he worked for the school district everything like he was fucking healthy okay healthy okay gets pancreatic cancer and dies in a week no bullshit my brother then moves back in and gets a raging raging cocaine addiction still to this day it's to this day and i'm the only one that's okay because i moved out no bullshit and looking back at my childhood growing up my nightmares were horrible i mean just like f so much bad luck and fucked up shit happened until i got out of that house just just um this is Make that symbol with some lavender essential oils or some water, some holy water, and, and you'll be safe on each panel. Isn't that crazy? So when I say that I know shit is real, I know when I say that I've experienced some shit, and then I have this other experience. Okay, so um, ever heard of Hampton Court out in England? And I have pictures. I was there. Hampton Court is this big old beautiful, uh, I did it a gap year over at... Oh, that's awesome. That's cool. Thanks, girl. Um, Hampton Court is a palace over in England. Now, growing up, my, my dad, my brother and my dad were like really big. They played like athletes. They played tennis. So we got to stay there overnight one time. <laughs> Yo, this shit, like, I don't even like to talk about it. It was so scary. Like we would hear like the craziest shit in the hallways. 
like screaming, yelling. And I was there with a girlfriend. She was, we were 18 because I did a gap year and that's why I got to stay there. But because my brother and my dad were such good tennis players and there's a tennis court there, um, it's called real tennis, it's, it's whatever. And we got to go spend the night there and be like, oh yeah, like this is so cool. Like, wow. Like they lived, it was like, they were basically like the tennis pros that lived there. And, um, so they have like a little house that was like in like they had like apartments inside the palace if that makes sense so we got to stay there it was like really fucking cool i couldn't sleep it was fucking terrifying we kept hearing crazy shit in hallways and then two times like we should we ended up getting in the bed together two times we kept hearing the the door to our bedroom fly open and slam closed it was terrifying and it was freezing cold. I mean, it was probably cold just because it was a castle, but it was just, I've had so many wild experiences paranormally my entire life. And so I know that shit's real. <laughs> it's fucking real. And I've had experiences in different countries. I've had experiences here in the US. I've had experiences in different states. Um, yeah, it's wild. And then here living, I live in Tennessee where we're not far from a place what's called Indian Mound. You can only imagine what that's called why it's called that it was like sacred lands that was then mm -hmm. yeah um then uh fort campbell where we are was during world war ii they had german prisoners of war so mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like all types of shit so there is so much activity just around here where i live um constantly and then you deal with a lot of um guys who are well people that have come back from war and who are struggling with some serious mental health issues that just draw more and more stuff around. It's crazy. Oh, hell to the no. <laughs> my girlfriend and I were sitting recording ourselves in my house. My voice turned into a man. <laughs> no, thank you. Native spirits are um, good and bad on both sides are powerful. Because you've got to understand something. This is their land. They are so connected. I have had a lot of... I've been very gifted and, and, and blessed to work with a lot of native... Um, <laughs> clients. And anytime I tap into their ancestor department, loved ones... Woo! Powerful. Powerful, powerful. And there's a certain way to work with them if you're Caucasian or like, you know, I'm like 8% Apache, like very, very little. Like nothing that I would ever brag about because it's really nothing. Because I wasn't, I didn't grow up on a reservation or anywhere near it. But blood tests and all that. Um, yeah, so it's, I mean, it's like there's a certain way to work with them. Like you have to be very humble, you have to be very patient, and you've kind of just got to understand that they're in charge, and you're in their world. <laughs> you gotta let the, you gotta just be open to the messages, and um, be very grateful. But I'll tell you one thing: a lot of those spirits, those departed loved ones that I've worked with, have come back, have come back to me, on many occasions, and helped me, out of nowhere for no reason. They didn't owe me anything. But this is their land. They're very connected and they are very appreciative of people that protect them and are loving to their land and are loving to um, their their family members because they've dealt with so much atrocities. And to see, they're such forgiving spirits. Very forgiving spirits. Very, I can't express to you enough. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Very forgiving spirits when they don't need to be. I, it, I'm mind blown. Mind blown. Absolutely. 100%. So those are just a few stories. I've got more, but those are just a few. Um, there's one story that I'm going to save for another day about the time I did see a demon in my closet because that happened. And that's why I know that shadow people are not demons. That's how I know that. <laughs> because I saw it, I learned its name and yeah. So that's a story for another day that we will absolutely have, I will find time for, but not today because that's something I'm still very traumatized by. Very traumatized and why I never turn the light off in that closet to this day, ever. And it's sealed shut. I rarely use it or keep anything in it. I mean, I have clothes in there. It's like whatever storage, but I barely use it. And it's, 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 oh, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Another thing is, I'm so weird, I don't leave the doors on my closets. I take the doors off my closets because I'm weird and I just feel safer that way. Except for that one door. I refuse to barely open it. So, there you go. It didn't have feet. I have actually really never noticed if it had feet. I never really looked. But that's an interesting uh, observation. All right, I think that's it. Any other last minute questions before I get rolling? <sighs> that was a lot. Hope I didn't talk you guys off, ears off too much. <laughs> anybody have to, uh, anybody plugging anything? Any lives coming up that people want to plug or um, stuff they want to plug or, you know, services they want to plug? Because I'm a firm believer and there's enough internet out here for everyone. So if you have any lives that you're going to be doing anytime soon or anytime you're going to be live, please put it in the chat. Let everybody know. We can all follow each other. We can all be each other's uh follower and fan and support system so like i said if you are promoting anything now is the time for you to take take the field <laughs> thank you girl you're crazy thank you and i mean that guys i'm all about listen there's enough out there for everybody um so yeah so if you're not plugging anything or if you're like psychic city witch and you're too generous and you're not plugging your shit plug your shit let's go before i before i uh i hang up and call it a night is anybody else going live later tonight so I can have somebody to listen to later? My turn to be the... Oh, excuse me. I don't know where that came from. Girl, will you stop? <laughs> Thank you. All right, any other questions for real? Because if not, I'm going to call it a night. I'm going to go hydrate, relax, maybe go read, a, go read a book, hang out, watch some TV, just chillax. Maybe go watch some lives. All right, well, cool. Love you guys so much. Um, have a great night. Um, I will put this up on YouTube as soon as it's usually, uh, I'll get it up there tonight so you guys can come back and, you know, if there's anything you forget, you can come back and check it out. Um, all of my links are in my bio. So, uh, love you. Thanks for all the love and support guys. You guys are the best. Um, I will see y'all soon. Bye.